Hey guys, if you've built the Pion 230 quadcopter, or any other quadcopter for that matter, chances are you're either into FPV or you're thinking about getting into FPV. There's a few options on the market for F FPV. You have your uh, stock standard video goggles. These are just some Fat Shark Attitude V2s. Uh, there's also Skyzone and Boscan brands. Um, you've also got other options instead of goggles. You can have an LCD screen uh, in front of you or mounted uh, on your head. Um, and there's also this option that exists now. You can use your smartphone as your screen. Let's check it out. So this is probably the cheapest setup you could possibly get for a, an LCD type uh, FPV uh, monitor system. Uh, all you need is a compatible smartphone for the application that I'm running on this phone, and I'll go over that in a moment. Uh, you also need two other items, both very cheap. The first item is this little cable here. This is a USB on the go cable. You can get these for two bucks on eBay, dirt cheap. And the last thing you're going to need is one of these. This is uh, a USB video capture adapter, specifically the EasyCap uh, branded one. Um, once again, this is also very cheap. Uh, you can buy this for less than $8 US delivered from websites such as um, Banggood, uh, Deal Extreme, uh, eBay of course, uh, and also from uh, Gearbest. They also have this quite cheap as well. So that's all you need in the hardware department. Let's check out the app that you need on your smartphone. So the application you're going to need is called EasyCap Viewer. Uh, Easy Cap, I'm assuming, being the same as the name on the USB dongle, having Easy Cap written on the front of it. Uh, this is available on the Google uh, Play Store. I don't believe this is available for iOS. Uh, there's no free or trial version with this. There is a cost. It is, you know, five odd dollars here. But I think that's quite cheap for the functionality that you can get from this, and especially what I'll show you in a bit, a bit later as well. Uh, scrolling down, there are a few dependencies for this ap application. First of all, the, the developer says only for EasyCap versions with chipsets of this UTV007 and STK1160. So I'm assuming when you buy one of these EasyCap USB dongles that they have different um, processors inside them. Um, and this application only supports these two flavors. So I guess that's something to be wary of when purchasing one of these. I'm, I'm assuming there's, there's more than these two for him to specify this. Uh, scrolling further down, it's compatible with a whole list of phones. So we have you know, the uh, Asus brand, Sony, Samsung of course, um, Moto uh, and Nexus series. Uh, LG and Lenovo are in there, are in there as well. Um, and lastly, uh, the dependency for your Android version, it's actually quite quite relaxed. It's for any version of Android with version 4 or later, so that's pretty much any phone on the market these days, uh, with the USB host function only. So I know my phone has USB host, that's how I'm able to run with the USB uh, on the go cable. To hook this up is quite simple, all we're doing is taking our video stream, in this case I have, the a I have an AV cable plugged into the output of the Fat Shark goggles and I have that running uh, into the input of the uh, EasyCap USB video capture adapter and then via the USB on the go cable into the phone. So with the application there's a few options that we have with this. Let me zoom in a bit closer. So we'll go into the menu and we'll have a look at some of the options that exist with this EasyCap uh, viewer application. Um, we can select our startup type, and this is the EasyCap dongle choice. So we have the, the STK110 and the UTV007. Uh, we can choose our video format between PAL and NTSC. Uh, we can uh, choose the number of video inputs. I, I only have one, so I'll leave it as one. Um, you're currently viewing the video on the screen in full screen. Let me uncheck that option and show you what it looks like without going full screen. Hit apply. And this is the, the end result. No, no longer is the image stretched to take up the entire real estate of the phone. It's now back to the, the standard you know, 4 by 3 ratio of the, of the footage. So that's, I guess, um, the, the real to life aspect ratio of, of the image. Although, you know, you've got some black bars on either side and it's nice having, you know, the full screen uh, real estate there to, to view the image. So 
I'll go back in and um, turn that option back on. Uh, we also have options to rotate video, flip video, a couple of audio um, settings and some signal uh, detection settings for the uh, video that you plug in. But that's pretty much it. There's not a lot to this application. It's actually quite plug and play. Even when you first plug the dongle in, it basically auto starts. Looking at the image quality on the phone, um, the actual detail is, is quite impressive. You can easily see or read the voltage um, from the on-screen display as well as the time. And you can uh, you know, easily make out detail in the video image as well. Um, it's quite clear, uh, quite legible. Let me pick up the quadcopter and move it around to give you an idea of what it looks like uh, to be moving with it. The motion is, is very fluid. Very happy with that. I'm surprised that the you know a smartphone is able to um, to react in such a way with an analog video <laughs> signal coming in. That's um this is a great feature. A couple of basic things we should check before we give this the tick of approval. The first thing is to see what happens to the display when we lose signal from the quadcopter. That is some LCD screens suffer from blue screen whereas if we lose the video signal the screen will just go blue and we lose everything totally. We don't want that. We want to see static. We want to see through the static because there may be still part of a picture there. So to simulate that I'm just going to power down the quadcopter and let's see what the display does. Looks like we've got static. Okay let me plug the quadcopter back in. And we're back. Beautiful. I'd say that's a that's a pass. The next important factor to check is delay or latency. That is how long it takes for the image from the camera to appear on the display. Now I don't have a proper scientific method of calculating that, so I'll just use the actual camera itself and I'll slow it down at the end and we'll see on the stopwatch how much time has elapsed has elapsed between me turning on this light and that light actually appearing on the screen. Let's give it a go. Looks like between 100 and 120 milliseconds latency, which isn't too bad, I guess, uh, depending on your application. Uh, for some people, that might not be a concern. For others, if you're looking at racing your drone or flying very fast between obstacles, then this latency might be a concern. You've got a couple of options when using the LCD display uh, from your smartphone. You can mount the display uh, to the top of your transmitter, which would be quite good actually, because you know all your controls are here and you're looking directly ahead. Um, you can also purchase uh, Google Cardboard, those head mount display um, items, you know, off eBay type thing. They're $5 or something. And, you know, actually have this mounted to your head to simulate the uh, those other cheaper LCD head mount display options that are on the market. And probably the best feature about using a setup like this is having the ability to use your smartphone as a digital video recorder, a DVR, being able to record uh, the live footage at the field with just your smartphone. Now unfortunately the EasyCap viewer software doesn't include a recorder uh, inbuilt. However, we can use any screen recording software that exists on um, Google Play. So I've already got one installed. Let me go into that now. I'll go back to the home screen. I'll open up this particular one. This one is called um, RecMe free, free Screen Recording. So what I'll do is I've already got this loaded up. I've, I've gone into the preferences and I've chosen 720p at 25 frames a second with an 8 megabit um, bit rate. So there's a whole heap of options with screen recording applications like this. I'll go ahead and start recording. I'll then go back to the uh, desktop there and go back to the easy viewer. So what I'm doing now is I'm recording everything that the screen sees. So that includes me waving around the quadcopter, around the room, too easy, okay. Let's go back now and hit stop on that recording. Open up the recording software and hit stop. Well, there you have it. If you're just starting out in FPV, this is probably one of the cheapest ways to begin. Um, or if you already own a set of video goggles like I do, 
then using this as a digital video recorder at the field is a very useful and versatile way of doing it cheaply as well. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll leave you now with some footage I recorded earlier today of flying down at the park. Thank mm -hmm. you.